What's up guys, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com and today we're going to talk about the number one thing that you can do to become the best tarantula owner. And if you are new here, this right here is my Chilean Rosehair Spidey. Um, you're getting a decent look at her butt right now. It's a very cute butt, by the way. Um, and uh, currently the water dish is dry because she tried to snatch my fingers a few minutes ago um, when I tried to fill it. So. We're gonna wait till she moves away from the water dish. She tends to get very possessive and territorial of it. So I don't really wanna have an accident today. So we're just gonna wait till she moves to the other side of the tank to give her some water. Tarantula problems. But anyway, if you're new here, I put out tarantula videos every single week. And if you want to get early access, you can subscribe to my Patreon, which is linked somewhere on the YouTube channel. I don't know how YouTube does this stuff. I'm still learning so much. But um, yeah, so you can do that. And let's get into it. So I'm pretty open to letting people message me or ask me questions about tarantulas. Um, I say this in my newsletter all the time and I encourage people whenever they, you know, want to purchase my tarantula guide or even if they don't want to purchase my tarantula guide to ask me questions. You know, you can email me, you can message me on Facebook, you can ask me in my tarantula group or Facebook page. Um, I'm really open to that and I love getting questions from new tarantula owners and most of the time it centered around like making sure that their tarantula is comfortable. I promise I live in a safe place, guys. <laughs> what is going on? And a lot of newbies want to make sure that they're not doing anything wrong. So usually it's a lot of reassurance and some basic questions too. And these are all amazing questions to ask. I love it. I love seeing tarantula owners trying to be the best that they can be and try to be prepared when they're going to get a new tarantula and just make sure that they're doing everything that's going to be beneficial for their tarantula. So it's awesome. But there's something else that you can do that will ensure that you become the best tarantula owner that you could be. And that number one thing is accepting that you will never be the best tarantula owner. And that's the truth. And let me explain why I'm saying that. Being able to accept that we never just arrive at a certain expert status or that we never just suddenly know everything there is to know is one of the key things of being really great at anything, in any hobby, in any area of your life. Um, being aware that you still have room to grow and being open to new ideas is one of the biggest things that you can do, especially in the tarantula hobby, because there is still so much that we don't know about these creatures. Despite the fact that the tarantula hobby is kind of growing a lot right now, um, it's still very new. We don't have a lot of scientific data on these creatures. There haven't been many real studies on these creatures. And we are constantly learning more just through the observation of our peers in the hobby. So by you operating under the false impression that you might know every care technique or every right thing to do or everything that's right for your spider could actually be preventing you from growing to the next stage in your keeping or the next level. Um, it's really, really important to be open to new suggestions and new ideas and listen to the observations and experiences of other tarantula owners. I think about the tarantula owners that I really look up to um, for either advice or just admire in the hobby and two of those people are Tom Moran from Tom's Big Spiders and Richard Stewart from the Tarantula Collective. And there are several others, but these two tarantula keepers are very open about the fact that even though they have a lot of experience and they've been in this game for quite a while, um, they don't know everything and they make mistakes and they're very open about that. And they always talk about, you know, that this is a continuing journey and a learning experience. I actually had the pleasure of interviewing Richard Stewart from the Tarantula Collective um, in one of my Tarantula magazines, which I will link to below. But um, his interview was really wonderful. And he said something really great about this that really highlighted that sometimes when we look back in time, we realize that we didn't know as much as we thought we knew. And this quote is really great. I'm just gonna read it. Um, he said, when he first got his tar first tarantula many, many years ago, he said, the internet wasn't nearly what it was today, and I was not someone that enjoyed getting online other than to play StarCraft or illegally download music. So this is how long ago that was, just so you get an idea. So I kept that poor girl in an enclosure with not enough substrate and a sponge in her water dish. Those, I mean, anybody who's a little experienced knows that those are no-nos. And he talks about how it wasn't until much later that he actually found out that that care was completely wrong and 
he ended up doing some research because she molded and he needed to know more about that process. So um, what he thought was good care back then and might have been suitable back then is certainly not suitable now, especially with the extra knowledge that we have gained about tarantulas and certain species. So that is something to keep in mind so much, so important that regardless of your level of expertise or how long you've been in the tarantula keeping game, you have to be able to look at yourself and be like, I can still be better. And there are still things that I can learn. And just because I might be more experienced than somebody else doesn't mean that I should discard their observations or what they've learned. Um, Cause these are the kind of discussions that help us learn more about these creatures and help advance the hobby. There's really only one mainstream tarantula guide and that is the tarantula keepers guide. And I think that this guide perfectly illustrates what I'm trying to say. Um, this guide was written several decades ago and there are several things in the tarantula keepers guide that are now extremely outdated or just flat out incorrect. And it's a great guide. You can still gain a lot from it, but it needs to be updated. So that's why I wrote my own tarantula guide because I wanted to reflect the newer things that are happening in the hobby. And I know that even with my guide, even though I just wrote it last year, I'm eventually going to have to keep updating this thing to keep up with the times, to keep up with the knowledge that we are advancing in the hobby and the things that people are discovering. And there might be one day things that I notice are wrong in that guide. So you can always do more or learn more things from other people. So it's just important to keep that in mind. The point that I'm trying to make is that the journey never ends. And if you really want to be really experienced and kind of an expert in anything, you have to understand that it is a journey and you never really just arrive at this expert status. You kind of get there with a lot of mistakes, <laughs> um, a lot of knowledge from your colleagues, a lot of support from your colleagues. Um, and you can't just like live in a bubble and you can't just rely on old information. You have to be open to new ideas. Something that I see a lot, especially in tarantula Facebook groups, um, is that people have these like rules about tarantula keeping in their heads um, and they're holding on to ideas that have been outdated. So we can't hold on too much. I mean, of course, we have to check things for accuracy. We have to think about the health of the animal overall. Um, we have to make sure that it's safe. but. There are really no rules, no hard rules. Um, things that we thought were hard rules 20 to 30 years ago have been disputed and are myths now. So um, that's with any like study or any hobby really, uh, especially when live things are concerned. When we fight about who has more tarantulas and who is more experienced and who's right and who's wrong, we really miss opportunities to learn from each other and have discussions and to actually do some real education. Um, and even if we are more experienced than somebody, that does not mean that we cannot learn from them. Um, so you really have to like think critically, of course, but you know, we cannot just dismiss people because they have less experience. You know, we are all always learning. I think when we are closed off and we think we know everything, we do stop learning to an extent. We kind of pass up or dismiss what could be very interesting viewpoints and perspectives and learning experiences. So I think with anything, it's really important to have an open mind. And I think the best thing that you can do, the number one best thing that you could do to be a great tarantula owner is to keep an open mind and allow yourself to learn and think about things differently. I mean, of course you can be proud of and accept the amazing progress that you've made and be, take pride in your expertise, but you can also accept that you still don't know everything and will never know everything. I will never know everything as much as I want to. Um, and I'm sure that in time, there might be several things on this channel that I will have to correct and I'll have to address in time. So we are all doing that and there's no shame in that. We don't need to be hard on each other or ourselves. This is a new hobby. It's growing really fast. Um, there are a lot of unknowns. So the best thing that we can do is be hungry for learning and more information and just accept that this is a process. Being hungry and being able to adapt when new information or new techniques are presented um, is really what makes any great athlete, performer, artist, you name it. And I think that is also true for pet owners or anybody who really wants to own their craft and develop the skills that are going to make them really great and able to handle whatever comes their way. 
So that is my advice for how you can really be a good tarantula owner is by being open and able to adapt when something better comes along or better information comes along. Uh, so anyway, I hope that was really helpful. Um, if you are interested in my tarantula guide, you can purchase it through my website. I'll leave a link below. You can also follow my Facebook groups. I'm going to leave all those links below as well as my Patreon if you want early access to videos. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any other, um, maybe like you have a number one tip for tarantula owners, I would love to hear it. Please leave a comment below or what do you think is the number one thing that you can do to become a great tarantula owner? Um, so thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye.